The Falklands, in terms of income received per capita, is one of the richest places on Earth. But even before a global pandemic and the recent rise in the cost of living, income inequality in the Falklands was higher than in many other places in the world. According to the Government Commission's State of the Economy report in 2020, between 2005 and 2019, levels of inequality were on the higher end of the spectrum compared to other developed countries, similar to levels in the UK and the US. What's more, the report states that the Falkland Islands has experienced a moderate upward trend in inequality in the last 15 years, with some fluctuations in either direction. This suggests that over the past decade and a half, wage disparities have increased, although not dramatically. Members of the Legislative Assembly have noted the issue of poverty and inequality many times in the House, and among the pledges of the island's plan is to improve social equity. Does poverty exist in our island? In, indeed, some believe it does not exist. It's been stated in this very House. The opposite has also been stated. This government needs to decide what kind of basic living standards uh, we should have in the Falkland Islands, and then be working to make sure that everyone can achieve that. Can capitalism and trickle-down economics fix all of this? I will suggest that we've been trying that approach for decades. It doesn't seem to be working. MLA Pollard introduced a motion in May's Assembly tasking the Chief Executive with creating an action plan to tackle poverty by the end of the year. He believes there isn't enough data quantifying the island's levels of inequality. I've, I'm under no illusions that there are people in our community who are really struggling. I have heard it said um, before that um, you know, people in the Falklands have more than one job because they like working. You know, I mean, I'm sure, sure most people would quite like a bit more spare time rather than having to work every, uh, every hour that they've got. But what does that look like? I mean, how many hours are people working? Um, so, so if people have two or three jobs, is, is that, you know, are they doing a normal work week or are they doing sort of two work weeks in one? But some members believe there are caveats to be raised on some of the findings of the State of the Economy report. I wouldn't like to read you know, too much into the statistics compared with large economies elsewhere because, um, because of our size, figures are very easily distorted. People on the lower end of the scale here have an enormous number of benefits that would not be available to people perhaps in the UK. So it does highlight that there is an issue there with income inequality and that you know we need to move people's wages up. We want the whole community to benefit. There are a number of different ways that a government can help to improve inequality. Welfare schemes can of course help those on the lowest end of the spectrum, and there is work underway in the Falklands to review these. But taxes on high earners and companies, including the highly profitable fishing sector, are arguably a good way to ensure that everyone benefits from a strong economy, like the one the Falklands has. Tax is low in the Falklands for both income and corporation tax. This might have its own benefits, but it also means that taxes aren't relieving inequality as much as they potentially could. Therefore, redistribution of wealth in the islands is very low compared to other places in the world. The Falklands has been a low tax um, jurisdiction. There's a balance. If you had a high tax jurisdiction, it doesn't always uh, say that uh, that's going to drive enterprise and, and, um, and, and, and an entrepreneurial spirit. It's not the panacea that some people might suggest to just simply keep increasing taxation. We have um, one sector that drives about 60% of our GDP. Uh, that's very, very important to us. Um, how much could we keep going back to that sector with the handout saying, give us more, give us more, give us more? I don't, I don't think you change tax bans just to, on a whim. I think you know, it causes a, a massive amount of in instability. The welfare motion put forward in May now has only two months left before the end of its suggested deadline, and the next State of the Economy report is yet to be published. But with more focus than ever before on the issue, the question is whether the government will be able to reverse the course of inequality in the islands and put the Falklands on track to being a more equitable society. We can probably look at you know, personal allowances, we can look at the, the tax bans, etc., which can be changed during the budget process. So we can look at those and whether or not there's any benefit in, in changing some of those. We're looking at support measures for people uh, actively at the moment. And in fact, we had a meeting this morning and hopefully there'll be something going to Exco this month to look at how we support people at uh, the bottom end of the scale. There's a, 
an urgency with this that um, you know I, I do believe there are some tough times coming for, for you know people all around the world uh, and we're not going to escape that so I think we need to understand how we're going to help people here.